Cobweb models explain irregular fluctuations in prices and quantities that may appear in some markets. The key issue in these models is time, since the way in which expectations of prices adapt determines the fluctuations in prices and quantities. These are easily explained with the example used by the economist Nicolas Caldor, agricultural markets. The x-axis or horizontal axis shows the quantity of goods, while the y-axis or vertical axis shows its prices. These are the supply and demand curves we will use to explain the convergent fluctuation. Let's say weather conditions are an optimal during year one, which causes the quantity supplied of a certain crop to be quite small, equal to Q1. The shortage causes prices to be unusually high at P1. When farmers realize how high prices are, they'll plant more in order to supply more the following year. However, supply is so high the following year, at Q2, that prices decrease to P2. Since prices are low, farmers decide to lower their supply the following year to Q3, resulting in high prices again reaching P3. This process will continue until an equilibrium is reached after some fluctuations. For our second example, we will change the slope of both the supply and demand curves. This example starts again with a shortage that causes prices to be unusually high, at P1. When farmers realize how high prices are, they'll plant more in order to supply more the following year. However, supply is so high the following year, at Q2, that prices decrease to P2. The process continues in the same way as in the first example, but in this case an equilibrium is never reached. In our last example, which also starts with a shortage, the result is different. In this case an equilibrium is never reached, and the situation of shortage and surplus will always alternate. Even though these three diagrams show very different results, the initial example is the same. The results are different because of the different absolute elasticity of the supply and demand curves. Let's see a final, more particular example. In this case, both the supply and demand curves have these continuous elasticities, which gives both curves such particular shapes. Starting again the example, we see that during the first years the fluctuation is divergent. However, at some point a continuous fluctuation is reached, due to the particular shape of the curves. This is called a limit cycle. The importance of understanding cobweb models resides in the imperfections present in any market. Reaching market equilibrium is never as simple as shown in the typical supply and demand example, 